So well, we're getting always... into the game, man. It's uh, round seven, Super Rival Season One. Blood Blockers versus Blame Elias, Harbor City. Let's go. You want to plug in? Yeah, we could. I was just waiting for my little CV intro finish before I started janitor. But yeah, we, we'll talk you in as well. They can see it on screen as it comes up here. Um, yeah, unit-wise, it's kind of kind of what I've expected a wee bit. There's a wee berserker kind of push there because obviously people have been using the berserkers recently uh, and prior to the, the whole t uh, four, five star units getting used because they're fast, deal with a lot of damage just now. But these uh, the guys of sloth blockers have a few in their. Uh, Inventory ready to use uh, to start off with, probably mm -hmm. to try and get up walls as quickly as possible. Along with Palace Guards, Modales, things to stop kind of cavalry just in case a Sally out comes out. If you look defensive wise, Blame Elias have got cavalry out and a lot of cavalry out ready to kind of come out and Sally out to slow down that push of Siege Tower. So, in a way, Sloth Blockers have probably already realized that's going to be a thing to do and avoid. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it might be. Some, something else I've noticed that if you look at Blame Elias' side on defense, uh, there's a lot of. Um... Uh, claymores actually and i think that unit can be very good on the wall it's really good unit to flank with it's very strong for a short amount of time but especially in these tournament games we've seen that short burst uh, of damage really help to tip the, the fight in, in in your favor yeah so that's an, an interesting unit choice i think but yeah it does look like a sally out to me right now it's looking that way we'll see how these guys get on with blame alias could potentially lose a lot of good leadership though from a sally out which sometimes mm. It works in your favor. Sometimes it could you could just lose a lot of leadership, and if you lose the A point, you end up losing the point a lot quicker because you just don't have the the units there to survive it. So we'll look at where they're going to sally out. Potentially, it looks like they're all moving. They did kind of take cavalry, but are they just like baiting the sally out with having the cavalry, and they actually all go to supply point and swap it out? Could be the strategy just to kind of. Get everybody uh, from sloth blockers all hiding away in the corner around the supply point to avoid anybody pushing anything very early on, which it kind of looks like a bait just now, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Unless unless they jump down, we've seen teams jump down after uh, like a few minutes later into the into the the game once the towers actually are closer. Yeah, and then we'll, that's when we'll they would take out the units that are pushing it to avoid. Yeah. It. There's definitely still some army girls uh, waiting at the stair, uh, like behind the door. So, who knows? It might happen. Uh, yeah, checking so, at the side gates, nothing much there, by the way. Yeah, so. it's just the way to say. It's only Lorcar that's got on his artillery there, and one hero over there. A couple, of, obviously, the artillery. The only artillery you can use is on and off for the battlefield. So, uh, on the walls, and then obviously out on the battlefield. So they'll be using as much of that as possible, especially as a defense. They want to try and whittle down as much of the siege towers as possible, potentially using javelins as well if they take out any javelins, but the defense don't have any of them. So they won't have anything to kind of quickly deal that extra bit of damage at the end of the, the push of the siege tower. Yeah, so so far it looks like it's pretty standard. So we're going to assume the towers are going to come to hit in a minute or so, and then we'll have to see if Blame Elias actually wants to defend the wall, of course. If they have so much cap out right now, that's that's not going to be an option. So they might be going for the standard that is now the standard, at least for us, the defending the the staircases behind the A point. But we've also seen many teams rotate to the supply more in the back. So I'm very curious to find out uh, where they will decide to defend this position. Oh, actually, one tower just go down. One, yeah, the center tower is yeah. gone now, so that's it. Uh, and the and the battle Ooh. ram actually got damaged, destroyed as well. So they're not even going to be able to get the gate open quite quickly here as well, which is quite uh, quite clever to do. Doesn't really get used very often to get in the gate, but it's always a good access point if it uh, push comes to shove and you need to do something there. Mm -hmm. But so far, nothing really going on, really hero wise or unit wise. Lose lost. Uh, you can see the advantage straight away. That, uh, the defenders have on a unit count already. They already have 22 units dead on the attackers, so that's a wee bit of an advantage. But me, most of the time, it is just the the lower tier serfs and the little units that are pushing these siege towers and the siege equipment. So it kind of makes sense that you're losing uh, at the very start. But two trebs have been used on the attackers, so 
down to 13 trebs obviously a being a very trebable spot so when it comes to defense you don't really tend to send as many units up to it as much as possible you try to avoid it and um, just to avoid the trebs but you can defend a on this map yeah, it has been done so yep and interestingly enough alias actually decided to open the gate so they are just baiting slot blockers to like they're forcing them to keep an eye out on it because they do have the cap out slot blockers can see that the cap is out so they cannot just walk up with the with the shiny or any unit that is vulnerable to stun mm -hmm. out. So they need to be aware now, and this, this is just going to take some more time for them to set it up properly. They also have the Arty Cav around the back of the wall, so if they did try to oh. go back into them, they had that just to stop their uh, a Sally in, potentially, if that was yeah. ever the case. So And then run over with Cav. But A obviously gets capped here. The Brain Melee's team aren't defending it, they just get around into the different areas of the map in which they want to defend, which tends to be that right supply point and the far left supply point, because on this map, supply points are crucial. If you don't have a supply point on the inside, it's a long way back um, to get units and come back for your next attack, so there's a lot of time wasted on it. Yeah, quite so. And of course, we won't see any artillery being built here. Normally, you would see a lot of mortars right away, like to to get them out of their position. But since see rifles, we don't play with any artillery, so it's just a unit. So from from here on out, it's just going to be rotations and somewhere stop workers and blame as well. Be forced to fight it out and see who gets the better in that one. Mm -hmm. You can see plenty of cav outs out here. Modals and uh, IPGs and stuff used in the defenses. Even hussars out here as well, ready for. Uh, counter pushes here to kind of whittle down and do like that extra final bit of damage once the infantry pushes down from either side of slot blockers here and that's what they'll be looking to do uh, here I assume once they've got their units all organized on both sets of ladder uh, stairwells the and, uh, says look this at must the be a fight it's drawn the finest people does take a bit of time though as you can see how long it's taken them to get units out of the supply point after the siege towers have got up and to get the units back up onto the wall ready to prep a push so we're down to 12 minutes we've got to take home here obviously with the added time that they got from a mm -hmm. but 12 minutes seems like a long time but when you're not pushing it, it goes a lot quicker for some reason and before you know it you're all the way back to reset up again and that's the where the time all goes yeah, exactly. And we could see uh, oh, for TV, XGRK you for and Malta are going back to supplies, the last two, and they're now finally going to the walls. Uh, these are two of the players that they stepped in, so there might be some, like, they might have to get used to some of those new players in this game. Um, one player I actually want to watch out for is Sol. He's, he's on the wing to Zars right now. Um, he's one of the star players on the Blame Elias side, for sure. He's been getting lots of MVPs. Um, nice. The other three players are, like, Missag, Dejivu. They're all, like, performing really well for this team. Yes, uh, I, I know so very well. He's a very good player. Even Lama by the Alex, the, the guy, mm -hmm. turns up a little good at the times. Aranor's a, a great longsword player as well, keeps these units alive for a longer than a lot of people can just because of that extra heal bonus that he has. But there's a wee hero fight going on down here. Tomaco yep. oh, is the first one, or Tormaco, Tormacno, dies to Lord Monkey there. So that's the first kill we've got in the battle so far. Uh, I don't know what the Polax did there. I don't know if he rolled by mistake and fell off of the wall, but um, yeah, that was a bit of a. Maybe a mistake there by by the the pool player. Definitely a shaky move there. Yeah, might be he, a nerf there. Fighting oh, for Gurkson doing first. the same thing. Gurk has decided to oh jump off the God. wall, and he's now yeah. getting ganked by three heroes here. You have Morales men mercenary, and then Deja Vu is the one that picks up the kill there as the Pike mm -hmm. player. So there's just two heroes died for no reason, uh, with nothing really gained. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but yeah, it's a long I mean, walk back. Yeah, we have seen Team Suicide, like, all together just to get to the small gate, but this is not the way to do it one by one. <laughs> Sorry about that, I got a wee cough there, so I had to mute every now and then. Um, but yeah, definitely definitely an interesting strategy. Sexy Q sees the, this new spawner in and decides he's going to have a look to see what units are at the back there, but he's joined back in with Cavalry there, Mako, so uh, what Cavalry did he actually bring out here? He brought out the wing to Sars, so maybe maybe that was part of their plan. They were like, right, I can't be bothered going back to the supply point. The best way to do this is die. Um, as sloth blockers start to make their way down both sides of these uh, these ladders, uh, the stairwells here, sorry, as they go towards the supply point. They're going to have to pay attention here, blame Alias, because obviously you don't want to get caught out on one side with too many people uh, rotating one way or the other. But sloth blockers just trying to bait them in as much as possible so they can get a pinch in here, but... Not blame Alias, aren't full committing to it here. They're only sending a couple of heroes in, but making sure that they're going to have units to come back around them. 
as the push comes in. We'll start zooming in a little bit here to the maiden fight as the supply point push comes in. You see the cavalry coming in as well here from the back. The Deja Vu coming in the back with this cavalry here. Charges through as well. Couple of charges through there. Bla Lama by the Axis. Alex Falls. Jack X Falls. Aria Falls here. Oof. So far it's a, it's a cluster in the centre here between the su supply point. Heroes yeah. after heroes. But they're all kind of, it's quite kind of even as things stand, unit wise and hero wise at the moment. There's maybe a little bit of an advantage just for the defenders, but they already had that advantage at the start before the push. So um, not really gained or lost, but it looks like the defenders will be pushing off the attackers of sloth blockers here as the Hussar charge comes through to wipe out the remainder of the units that were there on the push. And a few heroes extra die there as well, so the attackers are down to eight heroes as Blame Elias start to push herself back up and push the heroes away down <laughs> back down the siege tower to go collect a new set of units ready for the next push. Yeah, that was pretty big win here for Blame Elias. They killed 100 more units. Of course, there were a few yeah. killed in the start, but like a two, yeah. at least a full two unit difference there uh, in favor of Blame Elias. And uh, cr critically, I think the one of the slot blockers players with the Zara is going through the gate, but the bike defense from Blame Elias made sure that the Zara charge never reached the fight. Um, and also, slot blockers were a bit off with the timing there. Uh, they mainly us very quick on the on the main fight, and the the flank from slot blockers couldn't couldn't reach there. Yeah, I, I think the guys from the right hand side stairwell were a bit too slow to come and support mm -hmm. the guys that were pushing through the supply point area. They should be the ones moving first, then the supply point probably push moves because they're closer. But um, there was a little cap on the home point. I don't know who managed to go back and uh, take a wee bit of points off of the, the home point, but obviously any little helps if you can, well, yeah. you distract as much of the enemy as possible. But yep. And now it's all about the rotation. How quickly can uh, slot brokers get inside the city? They've now got the position at the gate, so they're, they're, they're already grouped together this time. Um, as they're still fully respawning, 50 now again, and Blamelia still got all the positions with the flanks. Um, there's yeah, a lot more of them there this time around than there was yeah. the last time around. Treb getting called in here, but really I don't know if the Trebs on this map here with the, the mm -hmm. wall was going to actually do anything there because there was no units even in that position before it even got called in. So yeah, Sloth exactly. Lockers having to rotate back though. They're looking yeah, to see the smaller sets of units here and they're trying to get to take small the group right away. Yep. As they get flanked from behind here, Blame Ely is sending the rest of their units come from the supply point here and they're going to get centered, like pinched in the center here, which isn't going to be great. Because the cavalry Zark comes in. Center. No, pike advanced. Yep. Pike advanced. Perfect timing. And then the Modal come in from the supply point side. Then monastics that are there, is it? Looks like they can get some good unit kills here potentially. But it looks like the cav charge got stopped by the pike of Matt. And so far, the hero advantage advantage is actually in favor of the attackers here. Sloth blockers on 15 heroes versus 12. So if they can keep this fight going, there's more cav coming in. This Keshik's here. Or is that Hussars? That's Hussars there coming in. But. They're going out the gateway, obviously no longer have their charge, but it's 14 versus 11. The home point is being capped as well. Godhashi is capping the home point just now, waiting and he uh, taking heroes off of the point. Aranor goes to defend that, but units and hero-wise, it's sort of quite even here. There's a f still an advantage here on the defender side, and obviously their spawn point yeah, and their supply point the is end, much better. Now, then why is it decided to split up now? Yeah, we're starting to get even here on the hero count as they push out and start to pick off the heroes as much as possible. Azura gets chucked into a pile and Mizu picks up a quad kill there. Uh, Deja Vu pushing himself out here, Soul picking up another kill here to Aria. But Soul's also outside trying to fight two heroes here outside on his own as an Adachi. He might fall to his death there, but Blame Elias overall did a great rotation eventually. Uh, had the number advantage near the end there and managed to push the units of sloth blockers and heroes out of the way. So it's going to be an interesting reset here. This will be the last full-on push, do we, with proper good units here. And as you can see, unit-wise, we've still got some good units to be used. Um, it's just dependent on who's actually got some alive. You've got some cavalry units and IPGs alive, but the defenders are going to have a little bit more of a an advantage here. And they've all dropped off of the supply point and decided to go towards home here uh, as their defense. Now, rather than defending the supply points at this point, no one... Exactly. Slot blockers is regrouping this time at the small uh, at, at the small gate. Uh, Blame Elias totally abandoning the, the the first supply point and now retreating to base and and the second supply. So we'll see. There's only one push left in in here. Um, making this yeah, making this very like, a, a different way of them to go and a longer uh, kind of walk mm -hmm. from them as well. So see what slot least, blockers has here. Yeah, the advantage for going for this supply is that the slot blockers will finally be able to use the traps uh, in this one. Yeah, um, exactly. 
it's one of the reasons why this might actually be a better one. And yeah, this is this is the right call, I think. Um, here comes some first trap, trap as minutes. you mention it. Are they just yeah. calls went in on the supply point here, taking us some units, not a major amount of units, is maybe a little bit too far past the supply point area, um, as the unit of calf starts to, to move back, but. Yeah. Sloth blockers moving in and going into two different directions here around the buildings, trying to find a way into the supply point as they call in more trebs. Yeah, we're gonna have to watch the flamers. These ones are going to be critical. Look at this. This is the flamers from Snot, and they're going oh, they're going to get killed. I think they're being dove. That's pretty well done. Nothing in the back yet for Blame Elias. Sanji Grenadiers doing some damage in the back there from Blame Elias on the units pushing for soft blockers. So that's definitely making it a difficult situation for sloth blockers. As the heroes start to fall very quickly here. Aria Tormaco's down and then Haven is down. So we're down to seven heroes on the attackers and only eleven available as well from uh, Yeah, very nice defenders. touch there from the trap with the Shenji. The Shenji is still firing full force, another grenade folly going in. Yeah, looks like that is it by the, the looks of it. There's only 80, it might get 70 units left and they're falling so quickly by the tens as the units and heroes just come in and f pick up everybody else and there's only one hero alive left. That's Lurker and as we can see, Lurker, the short sword, is trying to go around, jump over the fence here and trying to cap a home point. <laughs> Imagine he caps a home point here and nobody pays attention to him. That'd be the way to win it with no units left. Yeah, that'll be the ultimate troll, but it looks like uh, <laughs> Lies is actually stop blocking slot blockers out of this game. Yeah, they have uh, they have wiped them pretty much. There is no units left here. As you can see, heroes are starting to leave the battle. ZX has left the battle already. He's he's admitted defeat along with the rest of his team. It was a it was a good effort. We did look like it was pretty even for a few bits, but obviously the the number count and hero count kills definitely added up in favor of Blame Elias there. Um, and you can see by the end of it, we're going to have 330 units still available for the defending side. Just shows you how Harbour City could be so difficult, even though it looks like there's a lot of places to go. You can still be pinched and caught out very, very quickly. And because there is so many areas to come at, you've got to watch every single angle and every single side that you are defending or pushing in from. For the most part, it's just heroes trying to survive, just not dying here now at this point. And then most of the other heroes that have actually left the battle. Azura is running all the way back to the Trebs. You've got Maltar and Godhashi just at the small gate with Demonic. And uh, Maiko on the supply point. Heroes will start to pick off Toxos here. He was just he's just enjoying himself as a as a Polax in a mall. Start to chase him on their horse, trying to see if they can uh, they can get themselves an extra start there, you know, on this fight here, but Would you believe it as well, though, right? When it came to the predictions, right? There was 61% in the stream chat that actually thought sloth blockers would win this one. 61% mm -hmm. of them. So, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, unlucky for oh, uh, sloth blockers me. there on the attack. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you can always blame Elias uh, if they're playing, so. <laughs> yep. There they go. Now they're all just stacked up on the home point for the next 35 seconds because there's not really anything sloth blockers can do here. I don't even know unit-wise they've got Zykelian Militia. <laughs> they don't even have any other units out. So that is uh, that's a Sally out here as well. Units of uh, Cav just out here going to pick up extra kills if they can. So trying as much as he can. But Yeah, that's GG. Well played by Blame Allies. They they fought very compact, I think. Uh, they were always together. I stopped, and Slotburgers tried to out-rotate them, especially in the second fight, trying to go for the small group, but Blame Allies was just very quick to react. Nice performance. I'm just trying to jump off this little bit of my Google Chrome because it's not the right thing I wanted on my screen. Alright. Uh, Missak actually taking down MVP here, 7 hero kills, 0 deaths, 13 assists, 90 unit kills. Most unit kills go to Sexy Q with 106. Um, on the slot blocker side, Toxos with 142 and 80 unit kills. Not too shabby, but clearly not enough this time around. Yeah, no, it's a difficult thing there for both of them, the teams. The, uh, well, for the, the attacking side, for example. Jester Raven, though, with a 5 hero kill from the attackers. Not a bad effort for attacking when there wasn't really mm. many heroes being killed 
uh, on the defender side so he did pick up the majority of the kills on that there uh, as you can see at the end here hero deaths for uh, blame Elias it was only 13 so five of them went to one player so that was, oh, a, that was a good effort good. considering um but yeah 39 hero deaths for this side of sloth blockers and when you're dying three times the amount that you're uh, your opposition are then you're probably gonna fail and gonna lose that match up and that's the way it's went this way around you'd also see almost a 200 unit but well, almost 300 unit kill almost to be honest differences